If you want to add images of trees, people, cars, and other accessories to a scene, and in architecture this is often called entourage, you have a few options. It's possible to create or import 3D models of these things, but sometimes these models can be so big and, and complicated that they make the file unwieldy to use and also slow to render. And so here's a quick example. This is a very, very simple 3D model of bamboo originally a SketchUp model, and it has over 12,000 separate objects and 3D polygons within it. And you can imagine that a, a more complex model that requires each 3D polygon to be calculated and then rendered could add a, a really significant burden on the computer's brain power. And this can actually slow things down quite a bit, depending on the computer's power and the complexity of the model. Now, with some renderings, you really do need complicated 3D entourage. But in other cases, you can take advantage of a much faster and simpler technology called image props. And with RenderWorks, you can create a simple flat object containing an image or actually a texture of an entourage item such as a tree. And this is called an image prop and it's, kind, it's a kind of flat billboard that has special features that increase the sense of realism. An image prop can be a lot simpler than a complicated 3D model, and it's often a very good alternative to complicated entourage. So let's take a look at a specific example. Accompanying this part of the tutorial is a file called imageproxample.vwx. So let's open the file, and you can immediately see in wireframe view the outline of the flat image prop over here. And now render it in OpenGL to see what it looks like. And by the way, it's a good idea to set OpenGL to the best rendering quality. So go to View Rendering OpenGL Options and make sure that the settings are the same as these that are shown here. Set the, the detail to very high and select Use Textures, Use Anti-Aliasing, and also Use Shadows. So there are a number of things worth noticing in this rendering. First is that the image has a transparent background, meaning that you can see around and in between the leaves of the tree. Another is that even though the image prop is flat and may not be pointing toward the viewer when you see it in wireframe view, when the image is rendered it appears oriented properly. And you can see it here when we render it in wireframe and then in OpenGL. Now these two features, transparency, also called a transparency mask, and the rotation toward the viewer when rendered are basic and important features of image props. The transparency capability means that you can create a 3D appearance very simply using flat objects one behind the other so that you can see them overlapping. And, and the rotation toward the viewer means that you can place these objects anywhere in the scene without worrying about orienting them properly to a specific view because when you render the scene they will always appear rotated toward the viewer. Now a large number of image props are already provided with RenderWorks ready to drop into a scene. All of them have these basic features of transparent backgrounds and rotation toward the viewer incorporated. And in this tutorial we'll take a look at how you create an image prop from your own image and then we'll switch back to the main model file that we've been working on until now and then we'll place a variety of image props in different locations around the model to increase its realism. The image prop we're creating is actually the one already shown in this example. So first we'll need a graphic image file as the basis of the image prop and you'll find it in the folder containing this tutorial. It's called tree5image.png and it, it looks like this. And now let's switch to a top plan view. Now the process of making an image prop is a straightforward step-by-step -step procedure, so I'll just call out the steps one by one. First step is go to the menu command model create image prop. And the choose prop image dialog box will open asking us to select an image to be used in the image prop. We're not reusing an image and instead we will import one. So in the second step, click on Import an Image File, and then click OK. And the Import QuickTime Image Document dialog box opens. So now navigate to the folder containing this exercise, and the image file to be used for this image prop 
is located in the folder and it's called, as I mentioned earlier, tree5image.png. Now the next step is select the image and then click on the open button and the image prop options dialog box opens. So in the name data field, type a new name for this image prop, tree5. Now under dimensions, change the height to 3660 millimeters, 3660 millimeters, and then make sure that the lock aspect ratio checkbox is selected. And this way, when you change the height, the image will automatically acquire the correct width and the right proportion. And now we'll make the background color of the image transparent so that only the image of the tree itself will be seen. Under mask options, select use mask and then click on the create mask button. So the choose prop mask image dialog box opens and to create the transparency mask, which we need in order to make a portion of the image transparent, we will reuse the image we have already selected. So click on reuse an image from another resource. And now leave the drop down box at this props color and click OK. So now in the next step, in the Create Mask dialog box, select Transparent Color and click OK. And the Create Transparent Color Mask dialog box opens. And we'll now select the color to be used as a transparent color mask. So that means that anything in that color will be transparent in the final image prop. Now notice that the original image, which you can see here, has been prepared with a uniform background of a single color. Because when you make an image prop, it's easier to pick out a single color and then make that transparent. So that requires a little bit of, of adjustment when you first make the image. You can open it in an image editor like Photoshop or something else and basically pull out the background and give it a, a single color to make it easier to pick out during this process. OK, in the left window, click on the black background color and this will make it transparent and now click OK. So now we're back in the image prop options dialog box. So deselect constant reflectivity. This, what this setting does is it increases or maintains the brightness of the image prop even when it's in the shade and, and for this example we don't need that feature so deselect that. Make sure that the create symbol checkbox is selected and this will make the image prop into a symbol that you can place repeatedly throughout the scene. And the final step, make sure that the remaining options are as shown here. So these are height, lock aspect ratio, create plugin object. This means that it will automatically make the symbol into a, a plugin object when you place it in the scene. And uh, make sure that auto rotate to viewer and create symbol are selected and then click OK. So now notice that an image prop has been placed in the center of the drawing. It's flat, so you'll, you will only notice a thin line, but if you change to a right isometric view, you'll see the outline of the image prop. And now let's switch to saved view one, and now render with realistic exterior fast. Now notice that with a new image prop selected, the object info palette provides a few controls, such as height, width, and other items. You can always make some changes to the image prop by modifying the settings directly in the object info palette like this. So, so now we're done making the image prop and we can copy and then paste it into our building file that we've been working on during this tutorial. So let's copy the image prop and now we'll open the building exercise file. For this part of the tutorial, the building exercise file is located in the same folder as the rest of the material used here. So open the file building new entourage.vwx and once the file is open, go to edit paste in place like this. And the image prop will be pasted into the interior of the building, but we'll be moving it shortly to its correct position. Now, as you may remember, this exercise file has a layer containing a kind of placement map for the different items we'll be placing in the drawing. Let's make it visible 
by changing layer options and making the other layer visible. Go to view layer options show snap others and now we can see the map and notice in the front center of the building a label called new image prop so grab the image prop we just created and move it over to the label location and now all that remains is to go to the resource browser select individual image props that are already included in the file and then copy them onto the locations shown in the placement map that is visible so let, let's go to the resource browser and make sure that the browser shows the active file like this and double click on the symbols slash plugin objects folder to expose its contents and now simply drag and drop each image prop onto the appropriate spot in the drawing. We'll start with the father and son image prop select it in the resource browser and then drag it over to the drawing and place it here. And now do the same with each of the remaining image props. By the way, you might notice that some of the image props that you place in the scene don't have a single line marking their location like the one that we did before or like some of these uh, image props that show people. Uh, instead they have, as in this case, they have they show the location with a cross and that's basically a feature uh, of of an image prop, a, a capability that the image prop has which you can activate in the object info palette by selecting cross planes. What it does is it creates a duplicate of the image prop and places it at right angles in order to try and give it a fuller appearance when it's in a perspective view. So instead of being some uh, one simple flat plane, it's actually two flat planes at right angles to each other and they tend to cast deeper shadows. The file also includes one 3D entourage item, a car symbol. So use the same process to place it in the scene also. Click to select it in the resource browser and then drag and drop it onto the right spot. And once you're done placing all the image props and entourage items, change the layer visibility back, switch to saved view two, and now render with a realistic exterior final render work style to see all the objects we've placed.